Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Alright, so it seems the election at this point has been pretty well defined. I think a lot of the characteristics of this election, while well, they've now been formed, they're visible, we can tell what's going on. You know, there's obvious themes and obvious trends which we've been covering, and the theme I want to focus on with this video is this mass sentiment of frustration aimed right at the direction of the DNC and their idiotic, woke, progressive policies. People are fed up with the left-wing bull crap. Let's just keep it in layman terms. You can sense it, you can see it, you can hear it. We seem to be witnessing a mass political shift, especially in deep blue states and deep blue cities. Let's continue to talk about it. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so if we're talking about deep blue, let's go straight to California. Remember when Gavin Newsom tried to tell you that actually things were going great in California and the numbers were all fake? People weren't actually fleeing California. No, they were fleeing Florida. Gavin Newsom actually tried to make that argument. Then the Washington Post had to retract an article. Actually, I think that article was written by Jennifer Rubin, of all people, because they completely misinterpreted and misrepresented the numbers. You know, they want so badly for this narrative to go away, as if California isn't a complete hellscape. But it isn't going anywhere because it's not just simply a narrative. Unfortunately for Democrats and left-wing ideologues, it's, well, womp 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 reality and in more and more cases, more prominent people from some of the wealthiest and prestigious neighborhoods, well, they're packing up and leaving. Here's fitness star Jillian Michaels giving her opinion on the Sage Steel podcast. Take a look. I grew up here. I'm a woman. I'm a gay woman. My mom's a Jew. My dad's an Arab. I have a black kid. And believe it or not, my son is half Latin, even though he doesn't look like it. I hold a million cards in your game of woke victimology poker. And when I leave California, maybe you've lost your mind. Just maybe. Like, when you, when you have me running from home, home, maybe it's gone way too far. I actually take this, this line from Bill and um, Elon Musk, and they're like, I actually haven't changed. Yes. The world around me is shifting, and I haven't moved. So some of these laws that are passing here are absolutely mind-boggling mm -hmm. in relation to crime, protecting our kids. Like, we're decriminalizing everything, which arguably... I would probably be okay with, but we're not regulating any of it. Right. I, I mean, I could be liberal. I could go there with you. But it, it, yeah, I, I grew up this way. But when it's like, oh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to pass a law for LGBTQ rights so that 24-year-old men can sleep with 14-year-old boys and not have to register as a sex offender because it's just not fair to the gays. I'm like, I'm, what? It's what? Like, I don't know if you saw that one. That was like, I think, early 2020 when they passed yeah. that law. Mm -hmm. And it's, so I was like, if a 24 year old man touches my 14 year old son, oh, I, I will get a gun and yes. take matters into my own hands. Yes. Like, are you kidding? Or the fact that a 12 year old child can be put on off label cancer drugs. Mm to irreparably change their body. Again, if my son came to me and said, mom, my daughter, I think I'm trans. I'd say, okay, you know, like you want to dress this way? You want me to call you? Whatever the heck you want me to address, fine. Explore it. I love you. I'm cool. Like do you as long as we're safe, but we're not changing your body until it's fully developed. I'm sorry. Conversation's over. Can't get a fucking tattoo. Exactly. You're crazy. It's insane. Like, I, I, I'm, I, I just can't. It's, it's madness. It's madness to me. The perfect description. We're obviously seeing people waking up. You know, at first, we were the kooky conspiracy theorists. But as time is going by, more and more people are realizing that we were right about a whole lot. 
I mean, we tried to warn these people years ago, for Pete's sakes a decade ago, that this is where it was all headed. This hyper-dogmatic, la-di-da, woke ideology is going to end in disaster. You can't just throw your hands up in the air and give the task of solving complex societal issues to green-haired, weirdo theater punks and expect to close your eyes and wake up in a liberal communist utopia. No, you will end up living in the third world. I think that's what a lot of these people are understanding. Holy frickin' moly, where did it all go wrong seems to be the question people are asking. How did we get here once a gem on Earth has become a third world hellscape zombie apocalypse land? Totally unbelievable. You know, this is the street. And no, A pretty big problem, I might add. And then, of course, if you're a taxpayer in Los Angeles, if you're a longtime loyal Democrat voter who bought into the identity, bought into the messaging, you might be asking, well, I wonder where all the tax money's going. I wonder what the city's priorities are. Well, no need to ask. They've made that pretty clear. LA City Council members Hugo Soto Martinez and Nithya Raman were on hand today to help remove the signs. They say the no cruising and no U-turn signs were put up in the 1990s to prevent people in the gay community from meeting up with other gay people. I was also surprised that these um, <clears throat> these U-turn signs were still uh, up. And at first, you know, they seem a little. Um, oh, okay, it's just a no U-turn sign. But when you learn the history of it and you realize that these were used to profile gay people, it's so important that we have these removed. The LA City Council members say the signs were put up after the gay community began to grow and because there was a gay bar in that area. Ah, homophobic U-turn signs. Well, there it is. Homelessness crisis, fentanyl meth crisis, mental health crisis, housing crisis. Who cares about any of that? Let's spend $20 million on removing a no U-turn sign. Of course, I just invented that $20 million number, but who knows, given the amount of bureaucratic hours that are spent on some of these issues sometimes, it's a bunch of wasteful full woke nonsense most of the time. That's where all the Democrat focus goes. That's where the taxpayer dollars go and the real issues get totally ignored and people are finally waking up to it. They're saying enough is enough. I'm done with this place. I'm done with this way of thinking. You know, that seems to be a theme in this election. It's the sentiment. People are fed up with the Democrat nonsense. You know, it's just like the theme of this YouTube channel. The same kind of thought process, or I guess personal experiences that pushed me far away from left-wing ideology. Well, that experience seems to be catching on and it's spreading to the masses. Civilized, rational thinking people want their cities back. You know, I just came back from traveling in Asia. I spent a decent amount of time in Singapore and Tokyo. Now, they take it to a whole other level when it comes to order, societal control, and cleanliness. You know, obviously, there's a spectrum here, but you go to those cities and it's pristine. You can walk on small, dark streets or through small, dark alleys, essentially without a fear in the world. Clean, safe, orderly cities. People see that stuff, they've had those experiences, and then they think of what it's like at home. And really, what I think the reaction ought to be is that it's unacceptable to live like this, with trash and filth all over the streets, homeless people injecting themselves with substances openly on the street corner, the nights overrun by balaclava bandits, homeless encampments everywhere, people overdosing on the streets, an entire taxpayer-funded regime that subsidizes their existence, that subsidizes their drug use, just to have them OD'd and then revived with Narcan over and over again, costing the taxpayers an absolute metric F-ton. You know, you shouldn't have to live like that. People should have higher standards for themselves and for society. You know, if other societies abroad can do it, then why can't we? And that seems to be the thought process. And now, slowly, it seems like Democrats not only are losing young voters, independent voters, black voters, Hispanic voters, but possibly even their bread and butter, the wealthy metropolitan elite. I think that's why we're seeing all these actors and celebrities challenging the acceptable political culture. I mean, we've seen countless of examples, the fitness influencer from this video, or the myriad of other celebrities who have made impactful statements this year, and now here possibly adding another one to the list, Silicon Valley billionaire Thomas Dundon. How many people like Ken Ack, uh, Bill Ackman, Steve Schwartzman, Hal Lambert, John Casamitidis, Eric Levine, big names in finance are going over to the Trump camp? Why do you think that is? Look, I think probably historically some of the way Trump treats people doesn't sit well with 
when you have choices, but there's really not many choices anymore. And so you probably are more likely to put up he's, with. He's more pro business too, right? Yeah, he's pro business, and some of the things have gotten to where it's hard to support nonsense. How hard is it to be successful in this climate right now? What's the challenge with the American economy? I think it's different challenges for everybody, right? Like, I think the way regulation and having to be so careful with everything you do and say for fear of are people going to cancel you or, or, or think you're not supportive of other, other people's views, it just gets hard. Between all of these celebrities and all the people that you see really leaving the left and fleeing to the right, there's always that one common trope, a similar sentence, that things are getting to the point on the left where it's just impossible to support. Jillian Michaels, the fitness influencer from the earlier part of the video, said something similar where it seems like there's a shift. The left is going all the way left, like crazy left, economic communism and social Marxism, and the right is kind of just existing, moderate conservative to the further fringes. It's impossible to keep up with what's happening in the world of left-wing thinking, and so people naturally are just landing either in the middle or slightly right or full-on right. That trend seems to be continuing strong, and in fact, it might even be defining this next era of politics that we're walking into. Frankly, we're seeing conservative ideology dominate across the Western world, but in the end, I guess we'll just have to see where everything's headed. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys on this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.